On today's show, it's Puff. Dad, that was just embarrassing. Parenting. Rooster! And pheasants as we go on a family hunting road trip in the Dakotas. Presented by Federal Premium Ammunition and Peasants Forever. You know the drill, come on. The bond between bird hunter and their hunting dog can be hard for some to understand. Now everybody loves their own bird dog, right? Good girl! Nice retrieve. To pursue upland game, without a four-legged friend can be difficult, if not downright impossible. However, when you walk a field with a canine companion, the bird becomes merely a bonus. Oh, it's crippled. Get it, Izzy, get it! Good girl. Good wow, girl. That's cool. Good girl. Bird hunting is a connection between hunter and dog. Meet Hank, my seven-month-old yellow lab. He is my sixth hunting dog. Each one I have trained myself. I love training my hunting dogs, and I'm probably like a lot of other guys. I, I know I'm not doing it the way a, a pro would, but the most important thing to me is the dog responds to me and that they hunt the way I like to hunt, and they do what I ask them to do. And I am far and away no expert. But what we're able to do today is what I've tried to do with all my dogs. Get them to a game farm and let them experience some pen raised birds. Have that smell, be around the gunfire. That's why I like training my dogs, is because when they're out there and they make that first flush or that first retrieve, you get to own a little bit of that sense of pride with them. Find a bird. Find them There it goes. Come on. Come here, Hank. Come here. Good boy. Good boy. I think I'm like a lot of bird hunters. My favorite memories now are not necessarily about uh, limits of birds or a great shot. It's about a dog or a dog's retrieve or a point or an unbelievable flush. And I don't know if that's a thing when you get older, that the getting a bird is, is not as important as the experience. This is his last tune-up before we go chase the real thing. And I think he's ready. I'm not the only one excited for Hank's first wild bird hunt. For us, our dogs are family pets first and hunting dogs second. That's why my daughters wanted to come on this hunt. We've had Hank since he was seven weeks old. They've seen him grow, they played with him, they cleaned up after him. And now that this is going to be kind of his, his first big pheasant hunt, they were all in. They said, yep, they moved schedules, talked to professors, talked to teachers, because they wanted to be a part of this hunt. They don't hunt. They just know this dog is their pet, and they want to be with him when he's doing his thing. And I'm excited. I'm excited for our trip. 
um, and I'm excited to see how he does. Anchors, come around. It won't be perfect, but it shouldn't be. You know, that's the fun. So we're on a little family pheasant road trip. I've got my three daughters, two from college, one from high school. They're kind of playing a day of hooky with me. And we're taking our puppy, Hank, on his first pheasant hunt. It's a little bit like the grapes of wrath in this car right now. I've got bags on top of bags, a kennel. We've got an extension on the back of the truck full of bags. We've got more food than we know what to do with. This is kind of your typical hunting trip. I love road trips because you're all confined to one area and you can't escape. So like, you have to talk to everyone, and even if they're bugging you. Every time I look at Maddie, I go blind. <laughs> As I started to plan this trip, I knew I wanted to come to South Dakota for Hank's first hunt. I wanted to get to a place where I knew there'd be pheasants. My buddy Casey introduced me to Kevin Smalley from Hillsview Hunts, and for some reason, he agreed to host our bird hunting bunch from Minnesota. And when I talked to Kevin on the phone, the connection was kind of immediate. I told him the storyline about my pup's first hunt, and that later on the trip, we were gonna be spreading the ashes of our dog that we lost this year. And he paused for a second on the phone. He said, I'm just getting a little choked up thinking about this. He said, I can't wait to hunt with you, Scott. There it is again, that connection that can bring two strangers together, hunting dogs and the hunters that love them. On a November day that feels more like midsummer, our makeshift hunting party starts our hunt. All of us hope for success for our young dogs, one of us, praying all hell doesn't break loose. Hank, have any clue what's going on here? I don't think so either. You'll get it figured out. It's hard when it's this hot for him too. It becomes clear to us in a hurry that the warm weather makes it tough on both hunters and dogs. Hey, if she's hot right here. Oh, there was one right there. Yep. Hot on the dogs, hot on the hunters. Hard to scent in this conditions. Time to reboot this hunt. Let's let the sun sink a little lower and focus on a sunset hunt. Joker, come! Meet Joker, Kevin's hunting buddy for the last 12 seasons. Probably the most fun memory I had is there was a bunch of us hunting last fall, last December, and I never took a step. When I left, I had 13 birds in my vest. And I told Jack, you know, if that was her last hunt, that would have been the best, because I know the day's coming. But not today, Kevin, because Joker is reliving her youth. I said these dogs are extremely going nuts. We gotta be pushing some birds. Yeah, yeah. Dog is, good dog. Good girl, good girl, good girl, good girl. Fast and Furious here. Is he good to your all? Come. Good girl. It was so chaotic. I was like sweating. I didn't know what to do. Nice shot. It was so crazy and cool that, because we saw so many roosters and we flushed so many and that's never happened to me before. My dad and Kevin were on, they would get it in one shot. 
and it was really cool and impressive and fun. I think me and you are done. I got two, one in my bag, what do you got? Three, Izzy's got it. You got it? Yeah. Good girl, good girl. Huh. She's gonna be my mule tonight. <laughs> Before we were finished, all those roosters that we saw, that was pretty impressive. I have never seen that many roosters. It was very surprising just to see all these roosters coming out from nowhere and being able to catch six in a blink of an eye. Catch? Do we catch I'm, them? We shoot. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I meant shoot. <laughs> I thought we had great dog work. Never lost a bird. That's pretty amazing. You hear the overuse saying, it doesn't get any better than this. But for this bird hunter, well, it really doesn't. What is it about clear, calm South Dakota mornings, high expectations that go hand in hand with bird hunters? Dog is. Visions of last night's rooster mayhem have our hunting party hoping for more of the same today. Well, this is a great temperature right now. Right now, it's beautiful. Yeah, it would be nice to get a couple before it gets too hot. Yes, it would be. What we're gonna do this morning, we're just gonna have the young dogs out, right? Yeah, this will be fun. A little dew on the grass here still, that's good. It doesn't take long for our morning to heat up. Hey, Rooster! Think Hank's gonna get something up? Yeah. Question is, are you gonna hit it or not? That's kind of mean, you know. You saw me last night, didn't you? I was on fire. But you missed one this morning. Dad, what was that? For this hunter, dreams of another hot shooting day quickly crashed down around him. What Dad, happened? what was that? That was a three-shot fan hand. He missed a lot of shots, just a lot. I was kind of embarrassed, but you got it on camera. That's it's really embarrassing. But that doesn't usually happen to your dad, does it? <laughs> Dad, that was just embarrassing. Th thanks for the words of encouragement, Hannah. Welcome to Camp Self-Esteem, Scott. Your daughters and cameraman will be your confidence counselors. What is that? It's a falcon, I think. Pretty, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I think I would have missed that, too. <laughs> definitely. I think, yeah, I think <laughs> most definitely. Always a glutton for punishment, I know my luck will turn with a few more steps. She's hot here, so is Hank. Dad, what was that? Bad shooting. I was out of shells too on that last one. Dad, I could shoot better than that. I think you could, Han. Good girl, Myrtle, I'm a bad man. I have not hit diddly today. <laughs> Tail between my legs and properly scolded by my daughters, it's time to regroup, refuel, and look in the mirror. I tell myself, I can do it. And gosh darn it, people like me. Motivated by the pep talk provided by the voices in my head, we follow Kevin to a spot that we hope will lift our sagging shotgunning spirits. Izzy's hot up here. Hank, come here. Hold the phone? Did I just get one? Nice, Hank. Good dog. Good dog. Here we go, Kevin. We're rocking and rolling. Woo! Now we're on a roll. 
the monkey is officially off my back. Good boy, hangers. Good boy. Izzy here. Izzy, come. Rooster! That's Hankers. Good boy, Hank. Rooster! Wow. Bird hunting is a funny thing sometimes. On one hunt, you might not be able to hit the broad side of a barn. And the next walk, you can't miss. But I do know one thing, whichever way the chips may fall, it's always a good day when you have family, friends, and hunting okay. dogs in the field. All right, say rooster. <laughs> Getting our puppy Hank on pheasants was not the only reason for this trip. We needed to take an old friend to one of his favorite spots before we turn the truck back home. The last thing that we wanted to do on this trip was zip north about an hour from Aberdeen and hit this little spot in North Dakota that I've hunted many years with my friends and a few times with my daughters. What we're gonna do is we'll walk along this fence row. Let's see if we can find a good resting spot for Gus, okay? okay. <laughs> So this place in North Dakota is a special place for us because this was where we as a family last hunted with our dog Gus who passed away this um, April. I think it'll be bonus if we can get a few, even just get a few up here today. Yeah. With the thought of honoring our beloved Gus with a pheasant from his spot, I realize that soon our trip will have come full circle. Oh, she's birdie. Hit, 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 hit. Hank zero, Grace one. Oh, there's another one. That was a hen there. Good dog, good dog, Jiz. Hank's working really well right now. Good boy, Hankers. Gus was the best dog in the world. He was the best hunter. He would sleep in my bed. I cry every time we talk about Gus, because he was just the best dog, and it's really hard when you grow up with a dog. He's a like the first dog that I have memories of, and when you grow up with a dog, it's the hardest one to lose. I think Gus would really like Hank. I mean, sometimes he probably would be kind of annoyed with him like he was with Izzy, but I think he would love to be able that Izzy is not alone. What do you think about right here? It's perfect. This is our dog, Gus. This is a spot he loved to hunt. And one of our my favorite hunts was here with the three girls and Gus and Izzy. We're gonna lay him to rest here because we know he'd like this spot. He can, he can see the water. There's lots of pheasants around here, lots of ducks. He was just the best dog and we miss him so much. But we love Hank and we love Izzy and I don't know, we just miss him so much, but we love you, Gus. Love you, Gus. Love you, Gus. I'm a lucky guy. I got to come on a hunt with my daughters and go to a spot that's dear to all of us and, and say goodbye to a friend and introduce a puppy 
to uh, his first hunting experience. Great to have these new beginnings in your hunting life when um, you put a, a period and a little kind of maybe a sad face next to one that's uh, gone too soon. So there it is, a period on our family hunting trip, new beginnings for our puppy Hank, and a tearful goodbye for our beloved Gus. A trip that wasn't perfect, but then it shouldn't have been, right? Which is why, for this dad, it was perfect.